I have some guidelines for editing the binder pattern to suit your needs and I'm just going to act them out for you here on craft paper because that's the medium that I normally use. Um, so the first thing that I use this pattern for that's not a binder is a post mastectomy compression garment. So in that case, I make the binder just in exactly the same way that I do when I'm making a binder, except I omit the stable layer that goes over the chest. So in that case, we don't have the downward pull of the stable layer. So we raise the armhole or lower the armhole. Um, the binder has quite a high armhole because um, it, it helps contain the breast tissue. Um, if you find it's too high for you, you can do this. If you want to drop the armhole, make sure you, and you still make a binder, make sure that you drop it also on the stable layer. So you'll mark out these changes to the front and back and the front and back underlay, and then also lay that over your stable layer patterns and change the curves on them as well. So I'm just going to show you what I would do. So at the front and back armhole, I would mark three quarters of an inch down the side seam. And then I would use a French curve to blend the new armhole into the old armhole. You can probably print out a French curve from the internet. I can look for a link um, later, but that would do the job if you wanted to do this. Um, yourself and you didn't have a French curve, but basically you're just drawing a new curve. So I would do that front and back and cut out those curves and then trace those curves onto the underlays and if you're using it with the binder onto the stable layers. So here this is a copy of the front stable layer. I would just cut that curve obviously and then trace those marks on to and cut the stable layer. The um, second thing that people sometimes want is for this to look a little more like a sports bra. So that's really an issue of changing the neckline. <laughs> I don't have a very big space here. Okay, um, so this is the neck here. And I, I wouldn't want to meet the stable layer to, to the neckline because that pressure is going to affect the neckline more than you might like. So I'm just marking about a half an inch up from where the stable layer sits and say two inches down. And then I'm just going to use the French curve to edit that, um, those curves. So when you're using knits, um, the compression or the pressure affects what angles you can use. So right here we have, we don't want to make an angle that's smaller than 90 degrees. Does that make sense? Um, otherwise you'll have trouble with how the knit pulls on the garment. So I'm just going to mark 90 degrees at each of these points. And then you want to make sure that your curves fit into these 90 degree angles. So I'm just going to do the front first and then we'll do the back. Okay. So <laughs> you can see, I actually just have a cheater, um, a cheater line drawn onto my French curve here just from other neckline adjustments, but basically I want to meet these lines and not come, not carve this neckline farther into the garment because that'll create a bubble at the top of the shoulder. So what I'm going to do is just try to come up with an angle that brings these two 90 degrees together. So I would carve this out and try that as my new neckline. If you wanted to narrow your shoulder and create a more open scoop, you could do that. I just would suggest that you sew the binder first and re 
practice how you wrap one arm around the other and make sure that you're comfortable going narrower than that. So then I'm gonna do the same thing on the back. So you might, you might want a more open neckline on your binder for accessibility reasons as well. So this would be our more open neckline. We're carving that material out of the pattern and you can experiment obviously with what you need for your for yourself or for your customers or for your family members or friends. Um, so those are some things you can do. You can narrow the shoulder. You just want to make sure you still have room to wrap that one shoulder around the other to finish the armhole. Um, and I'm out of breath. <laughs> you want to make sure that any edit you make you make the same edit to the other side or to the other pattern pieces. So in this case, this neckline only needs to be transferred to the underlays. If you carved into the stable layer and met the neckline at the front with the stable layer, you might need to edit the stable layer pattern as well. Um, if you're changing the side seam, you wanna make sure you've changed the side seam the same amount on both sides. So if someone is they have a binder that they don't want their family to know that it's a binder and they want it to look more like a sports bra. Um, what you might do, my, <laughs> oh, my headphones just kicked off. Okay, what you might do is trace your stable layer onto your, um, it would really depend on their size, but trace it onto, your front here and you could trim at that length so that is three and a half inches shorter than I don't know if you're in that truck three and a half inches shorter than this I think this is the underlay that I've traced here so you could trim this and if they were very small and their bust was quite high you could trim even more and you might want to experiment with that but you can just cut a strip of fabric that is say five inches wide and slightly shorter than this distance um times two <laughs> cut a waistband basically an under bust an under bust band um that's slightly smaller than the bottom of the binder and you would serge it on with a mesh underlay and that would give that sort of sports bra look um, to something that's like a stealth binder. Okay, I'm just gonna see, is there anything else I would... If you went shorter than this, then you would also um, take some, like, some of the height off of the, off of the stable layers. But you don't wanna go too short because you wanna make sure you're containing and also flattening that bust. I hope I'm making sense. Okay, that's all I was planning to do today. I hope that uh, it made sense. And if you have questions, just let me know and I will um, answer them as best I can. I did notice that um, there's a f more views than usual on the my answer to Maria um, for the not having a searcher and making a binder. And I thought I might film a binder making just with my home sewing machine. Um, so let me know if you're interested in that. I can't believe there's 17 of you now. That's amazing. Um, it's just a little bit of a tricky angle like this, the serger and the industrial sewing machine. I have a lot of room to show you what I'm doing and less so on the home sewing machine because it's such a tight space, but I will over the next week or so see if I can figure that out. And if that's something that would, Im would be important for you to see, just let me know. I hope everyone's doing well with their binder sewing. There's been so many downloads and I just haven't heard a peep really. <laughs> so, um, I hope no one's too frustrated. All right. Thank you so much. Um, have a good day.